Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Now you're in a very special treat because I'm going to be reviewing one of my all-time favorite Studio Ghibli films ever made. Not to mention my number one favorite from Hayao Miyazaki. And that is the film that you've all been waiting for for me to review. My Neighbor Totoro! That's right. And I'm holding both the Fox version and the Disney version, which is now being re-released by G Kids on Blu-ray and DVD, um, which happens to be that dub, which is a story about two girls, Suzuki and Mei, who just met a ginormous creature named Totoro. Or at this rate, they're all Totoros, <laughs> as you can see here. Now, the first time I saw my neighbor Totoro was back when I was eight years old. I saw the English dub version from 1993, which is actually dubbed in 1989, which had Cheryl Chase doing the voice of May. And for those who don't know, Cheryl Chase has been known for doing the voice of Angelica C. Pickles. Yeah, Tommy's cousin, who's the meanest uh, bully of them all. And of course, <laughs> she's the toughest of them all, from Rugrats. And I saw it in theaters when I was very young. And ever since I saw that movie, I really enjoyed it. It was just so wonderful, breathtaking, and a total feel-good movie. And that was, of course, the one that I'm holding right now. And I was lucky to pick this up on DVD at uh, my local thrift store. Because, unfortunately, they were going for higher prices. And, as you can see right now, I only picked this up for three dollars. That was a good deal. It was out of print, but it was worth it. Even though this was pan and scan, no features other than just trailers from other Fox films, but it does have um, the English dub version that I definitely remember the most. And, and all the, the dialogue that they had that was featured so now you know that I actually remember it by heart. Um, but for years, I had picked up this release that came out in 2006 when I got this at Tower Records for 30 bucks. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty expensive, but still it was a good deal. Um, this, of course, had a new English dub at the time with the Fanning sisters, Dakota and Ellie. Which also had Tim Daly from Wings. You remember that show from the 90s? So, the difference is though is that some of the dialogue has changed. For example, in the English dub version from 1993, it was um, when they actually begin to notice what those uh, those dark uh, furries were, you know, the ones that look like uh, like one of those uh, sprites that they had, they they say that they were dust bunnies, and they even mentioned the kingdom of the forest and all that. Well, in the 2005 English dub version, the Disney dub, they referred to them as Sir Gremlins. And they just say the spirit of the force. So, here's the difference here. In exchange, plus they change the dialogue here and there. And, you know, the acting is different compared to the other. So, there you go. But the main reason why I did pick up this release was that it's in widescreen, anamorphic, digitally remastered. 
has the Japanese version included and it also has uh, the French version as well and some good extras included plus it's a very nice release for to this set so and plus I love the cover art that they chose especially on the back too where you can see the cat bus <laughs> yeah and of course uh, Hold on, I'm going to try to get it out. Uh, yeah, you get all these uh, flyers for the Disney releases. You have of Narnia and Chicken Little. You get this. <laughs> and it even shows you um, the art books that they got. Yeah, one for My Neighbor Totoro and the other one for Howl's Moving Castle. That's how much they cost back then. <laughs> and of course, you can see the scene selections. Where you see the cat bus. Just a quick close up of the 2006 DVD release. You can see a picture of Totoro holding the umbrella along with Suzuki and May. Yeah, May is just holding on to Suzuki. Because, you know, she was being really tired and she wanted to held on. She was ready to fall asleep. And it's all raining, too. They're just waiting for the bus. Yeah, the cat bus. And here you go. Here's another picture. This is what the bonus features. And, and you can see the cat bus right here. Really nice. It's very similar to the, um, to the other release, too. And I'm going to show you right now before I put this away. Uh, safely. Okay. And as you can see right here on the back, it's very similar. But you get this. <laughs> yeah. This just a scene selections on the back. So there you go. <laughs> okay, now behind the history of my neighbor Totoro, it was originally came out in Japan. It was the second film that was produced by Studio Ghibli by Hayao Miyazaki along with his colleague, or Iseo Takahata, if I said it right. Hayao Miyazaki just did movies like Nausicaa, The Valley of the Wind, and Castle in the Sky, or Lapida Castle in the Sky, which that was his first film that he produced from Studio Ghibli. Iseo Takahata just did a film called Grave of the Fireflies, and this was going to be double featured with My Neighbor Totoro. Probably one of the rarest times to ever have two movies being double featured together. Which kind of seems uh, kind of strange at first because what you get is a feel good movie that goes with a film that's an anti war movie and it would burst into tears. Which is actually one of the most saddest films ever made. So that's really strange when you think about it. But they're both good movies, nevertheless. But My Neighbor Totoro, without a doubt, was the most breathtaking, wonderful film ever made for its time. It's a feel-good film for all children around the world. Yeah. And it's the kind of movie that's, that's a big fantasy for everyone. And it really shows. Also, I picked up this, this Totoro, that's actually a brown plush doll of Totoro, so it's not gray as I expected it to be, but it was cute. I actually picked this up for $10.99 at, uh, at a local uh, gift shop, uh, which had all these anime stuff and all this other uh, merchandising from, from other shows as well. 
Uh, it, it was a small shop in Van Nuys, which, which is right across from the movie theater. Yeah, the Regency um, Plant. Yeah, the Regency Plant 16 in Van Nuys, the, the theater that I usually go to. It was unfortunately the the shop has already been closed down, so it's no longer around anymore. And I picked this up, and it just looks really cute, very cuddly and. <laughs> Very soft and cushioned. It's like, man, you just really want to have this doll completely right here. I just really love it. Yeah. Uh, but hey, by any chance, you can pick this up um, on eBay or Amazon or, or any other place. Or even on those Japanese websites to see if they have them. You can pick up all a lot of good merchandising they have for the movie. Because yeah, they had tons of them. You could even try to get some of them at Hot Topic as well, and they were getting them too, at the time. You know, they had a lot of T-shirts, uh, backpacks, uh, lunch boxes, you name it. They had tons of stuff. They even had the soundtrack and all of that to go with it. It was just perfect. See, this is why Totoro is a culture phenomenon, not just for Japan, but for but for worldwide, everywhere, yeah, nationwide, it, it could be popular here in the U.S., America, as well as um, any other country. Yeah, when you think about it. So now I'm going to get to my review, starting with the cast of the English dub version from 1993, which is actually from Streamline Pictures, that was done in 1989, but it was produced and released by Studio 50th Street Films that's part of Troma. It was actually produced by uh, John Daly and Derek Gibson, both of which were the founders of Hemdale Pictures, and of course co-producer Jerry Beck. It stars Lisa Michelson, Cheryl Chase, you know, from Rugrats, Greg Snigoff, Alexandra Kenworthy, Kenneth Hartman, Natalie Kaur, Carl Berzek, Brianne Zadell, Melody McQueen, with Steve Kramer, who had work on other voice acting for other shows, including ones that are produced by Saban Entertainment, such as Grimm's Fairy Tale Classics, uh, along with Edie Merman, Larry Cody, that's right, if you're familiar with, she also went on to do other stuff too, including Digimon, for the English dub versions. Kerrigan Monahan and Doug Stone. While the English dub version for Disney and G Kids, Dakota Fanning, along with her sister Ellie Fanning, Tim Daly, once again from Wings, Leah Salonga, Frank Welker, the famous uh, voice actor, also known as the voice god himself, Paul Bircher, Pat Carroll, uh, Kev Susi, you know, from Rugrats, also, and also did some other voice acting for other shows, even Tiny to the Ventures, and many others, Peter Wenende, Bridget Hoffman, uh, Rusty Taylor, who also had done some voice acting for other shows, including DuckTales, and Tress McNeil, that's uncredited, unfortunately. The Japanese version stars Noriko Hadaka, Chika Sakamoto, Sajesato Ato, Sumi Shadamato, Hitachi Takachi, Tashi Yuki Amagasa, Tani Katabayashi, Naki Tasuta, Chi Kajuro, Haruko Mayama, Masachi Hirose, Machiko Washio, Riko 
Suzuki, Taka Namamura, Yuku Masutana, and Toma Tomamichi Nashimura. And it's written and directed by Hayao Miyazaki. The movie began somewhere in Japan in 1958. We meet a university professor who's also uh, the father of two daughters, Suzuki and Mei, named Tozuo Kusaskabe. They moved into an old house that's not too far from the hospital where his wife and her mother, Yazuku, is recovering from a long-term illness over there. So they're staying over during the summer. Suzuki and Mei had begun to find out that their house, while already packing in with all the stuff, is being inhabited by tiny creatures that are basically like dust bunnies of some sort called Suzuwatari, which is house spirits that's moving from darker to light places all the way around. Uh, between rooms after room. May actually caught one of them, which actually grew all the way into one, and suddenly she got all the, the black dust on her hands and her footprints all, all the way around. And then suddenly uh, Suzuki started getting some, some uh, dust on her foot too. <laughs> they also met uh, their granny, and they began to explain that about those tiny creatures that's hiding around from room to room. They're basically uh, suit spirits uh, from the kingdom of the forest. They drift away from the wind and imply that they're going to actually find another empty house somewhere. So one day, just as Suzuki just went to school with her friend, a new friend, even though, yes, there's also a boy next door who keeps pressuring her <laughs> and actually telling them that the house is haunted. Yeah, just joking around here and there. Um, May suddenly spotted um, two rabbit like uh, creatures. They're very tiny. And they're following around under the house and they're going all the way straight because they also found some acorns um, earlier in the film that just fell from the roof of the house. So the, she basically discovered those uh, spirits as we speak, you know, those creatures, and they went all the way into the briar patch and into the hollow of a large campier tree. And that's when she meets the giant creature of them all that are, that are a lot huge and bigger than all the smaller ones above, simply known as Totoro. Yep, <laughs> which is right here. Except it's a gray version of Totoro as we all know and love. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to put it right there. So. <laughs> So basically May just um, hang around with the giant creature, Totoro, just laying down until, until Suzuki arrived uh, from school and just uh, found out that May is um, somewhere in the forest falling asleep and she just got up only to discover that Totoro disappeared. Unfortunately, no one could actually believe that she, that she actually saw the creature. But they'll soon be able to find out later on. Of course, we did learn that, that no adult can actually see any of those creatures other than kids alone. So, yes. So, hoping that Suzuki will be able to get a chance to meet this wonderful giant creature, Totoro. But then, one rainy night, the girls were waiting for Tezuo's bus because, you know, he had to work late at night at the university. Yeah, he's doing a lot of homework. 
and trying to keep up with with his studies and all this other stuff. And so they're basically waiting to to be picked up because unfortunately, yeah, May had to stay over at Suzuki's uh, school because unfortunately his father couldn't pick him up. I mean, Randy almost thought about picking them up, but unfortunately, May decided that. She would be better off uh, with Suzuki instead. They didn't have an umbrella though at first, and that's where that boy, the little boy, started uh, <laughs> um, giving them the umbrella, his umbrella that's filled with holes in them. So they waited um, at the bus stop just to find where their father is. But then they discovered something that they didn't think they would discover all this time. As they waited, uh, May got really tired. They held on to Suzuki, and that's when she spotted Totoro. Where <laughs> he was just waiting for the bus, and he had to put in a, uh, a leaf on the top of his head because, you know, that way he can protect himself from the rain. And then that's when we discovered Cat Bus. That's right, Cat Bus. So Totoro is just about to go to, to where he lives in the forest on a Cat Bus. Well, <laughs> well, Totoro actually gave them a gift, which turned out to be tree acorns, so they can grow a giant tree. So that's when the, their father had arrived from the bus and they explained to their father that they finally met him. Totoro and the cat bus. So yeah, they, they plan on using the tree acorns to grow the entire giant tree as they, as they did. And once they did that, yeah, with the help of Totoro and the rest of the tiny creatures. Uh, Totoro actually went on a spinning top that made him fly. And, and he was flying along with Suzuki in May. All the way around at night. And of course, they even hanging around on the tree while playing a uh, accordion. So... It was just beautiful. So then they they were hanging out with Granny, along with the little boy. They're about to find some vegetables for them to eat. You know, such a yeah. They Granny just grew out some vegetables that she had in her garden. They pick out some uh, cucumbers and you know tomatoes, even corn on the cob. And they were actually planning on getting a corn on a cob for their mother. But that is until the little boy had received them the uh, a telegram from their mother explaining to them that, that she won't be able to recover um, the following day. Like she won't be able to get out of the hospital. Now they, they got really worried about this because they were afraid that their mother was about to die. So because of that, May ran away, trying to give uh, the corn on the cob to her mother at the hospital. But it was far away from here, and Suzuki had to look for her everywhere she went. Uh, with, with a lot of help of people all the way around. So they're trying to find her because they actually found uh, the missing sandal. But then it turns out that it was not May's. So then Suzuki decided to actually go straight into the hollow, into the, the Camboria tree to find Totoro, and begins to explain to Totoro where May is. That way Suzuki can find her. So that's when the cat bus had finally arrived, and, and boy, you just gotta love the cat bus. Because now in, in the. Um, the 1993 English dub version, as I explained, this was different because this is where we get to hear 
a voice communicator telling you your your next stop of a destination where they tell you where to take you there like they'll tell you where May is and they'll definitely take you where the hospital is but in the 2006 English dub version doesn't say anything at all unbelievable and that's what's really missing about that but again, I'm just going for preference here and there. <laughs> and I, I know the Japanese version is quite different as we speak, because that's how it was in the originals. So anyway, back to the film. Suzuki was on the cat bus, and while Totoro is just waving her goodbye, and, and then the cat bus suddenly went straight to the particular location where May is. They finally found her and now they're both together again going straight to the hospital so they can see their mother while their father Tezuo is actually visiting with his wife of course the mother only to find out that the two girls were there along with the cat bus as they're watching on the window and they left their the present, which is the corn to cob. Yeah. And then the movie ends, where they just ride around on the cat bus, and they came, they, they arrived, you can see Granny and the little boy, and there you go. And all I can say is, this was a very wonderful film. Very beautiful, breathtaking. Once again, I keep saying the same words three times already now, but it's perfect. Oh man, it, it was just a fantasy waiting to happen. I really love the creatures. Um, they were beautifully animated, well done, well made. It's just, you just feel like you just want to hang around with Totoro along with the creatures around and and you just want to give a good nice uh, big squeeze <laughs> a nice big hug and you just want to hang on with it no doubt about it and of course the cat bus I mean you definitely want to ride on the cat bus where it just flies around and just moves around to another location here and there and just oh my god it's just Oh, amazing. I also love the animation that was done by them, by the Studio Ghibli team, including Hayao Miyazaki. It just looks breathtaking. Definitely heartwarming right there. I also love the soundtrack that they got. A lot of beautiful music that you never seem to forget. Uh, my favorite score that they had was, uh, was the huge tree in the Takamori Forest that was very beautiful uh, I also like all the other scores that they got such as uh, Totoro and, and of course the the stroll song from the beginning uh, and during the opening scene yeah you love that opening sequence where they show all the the creatures you know moving around you see the acorns you see May walking around like they're marching and of course um, who couldn't forget uh, <laughs> that beautiful uh, theme song to Totoro at the end? It just works. Um, th there was a lot of great uh, music that they put into it. It just works. It, it just fits so well. They actually are going to plan on adding in an attraction uh, at a uh, local theme park for, for Studio Ghibli. So, uh, in Japan, so they're actually going to be able to put in a cat bus so that way everyone could ride on. It would have been so awesome to ride on the cat bus. So it's good to see we're hearing about that. They're actually working on that too. Because I know they also have a museum for Studio Ghibli and they got all the merchandising that they got and they got everything. Perfect. <laughs> and I, I'm getting into it somehow. Um, 
I love the characters in the film too. Suzuki and May, they're, they're just both uh, perfect. I mean, it's definitely what you get for these two sisters right here. They they go out to have to explore a lot of adventures, only to find out uh, what's hidden beneath um, the forest. It's just amazing, and and you definitely can see it right there. I mean, it is a shame that adults can't see those creatures, but that's just how they had to go for for the story. But it works. Um. I love the voice acting from the English dub version from 1993. Cheryl Chase definitely brings uh, <laughs> May to to the storm because she sounds a little bit like Angelica, but quite different. Because think of it this way: I mean, this was before I saw Rugrats, only to recognize who the voice actress was, and now I got my answer. <laughs> But she was very good too. I mean, when she provided the voice, uh, along with um, voice actress uh, Lisa Michelson, which sad to say she passed away in 1991, when she actually did the voice of Suzuki uh, back in 1989. Because actually, the English dub version dates back to 1989. It was going to be released by Streamline Pictures, which is a production company that was. I believe it might have been owned by Orion Pictures or some sort. Yeah, it might have been. Um, and they were going to release this film in theaters um, in the late 80s, but unfortunately, I guess it was due to some of the rights issues that was going around. And plus, Hayao Miyazaki was, was already furious enough that because of his... Um, because of the way they, they edited out uh, his movie... Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, which was called Warriors of the Wind, which happens to be the the first uh, movie from Hayao Miyazaki that I actually did saw on TV. Yeah, that was released by New World Pictures. Yeah, that was the first movie I saw on TV before I saw My Neighbor Totoro in theaters. And when I saw this movie in theaters as, as an eight-year-old boy, I swear to God, I, I really wanted to get into my imagination to actually ride on the cat bus and hang around with Totoro. I mean, geez, what kid would? I mean, this this is amazing. I mean, this is the perfect fantasy that you want to have. And it, it was just... And that's why it became one of my favorite movies ever since. And for years, I've been trying to find a VHS copy of the film, which I finally did uh, later on, and then I finally found the DVD. Yeah, even though I did pick up the Disney release for digital remastered, anamorphic widescreen, all that. Yeah. Um. Uh, okay, and back to the characters. Uh, Granny was also very good too, and also uh, their father, Tezuo. Yeah, because I mean, even though he was very busy, you know, but at times he does hang around with the girls when he's not busy. Um, I love the moment when <laughs> when they're in the bathtub and <laughs> they're just but be they're beginning to hear the wind um, outside. It was a very windy night, and they begin to spot all these tiny creatures already hiding around the house. You know, they started laughing really hard. <laughs> yeah, while they were taking a bath and <laughs> they're just splashing around. You know, trying. to trying to scare them off. I mean, th th this was just an amazing uh, amazing shot right there. Amazing the bonding between the father and the two girls. It's just amazing. Plus, the father was actually very nice. He was he's very cool. I mean, he's very calm. He's He really does take good care of the girls uh, really easily at, at times, and it shows. I mean, they hang around. They they plant something, they they fix everything, they did whatever they can, you know, during the day, you know, when when he's not busy, you know, studying and all that, he does hang around with them. But then sometimes Granny hangs around with them too, and then and I know the little boy is just just going around making fun of them. <laughs> but then at times, you know, he's he's getting to know them very well. So there you go. So it's perfect. Voice acting 
and the 2005-6 English dub version is fine. I mean, Dakota Fanning, along with her sister Ellie, did a fine job uh, along with Tim Daly, but it's not nearly as good as the, the 1993 version, as I could say. Still, you know, I'll give them credit for what they did. They, they really try to follow it very well here and there with the story and the dialogue and all that. And the Japanese version, of course, spectacular. Um, a lot of great voice actors uh, from Japan, so they provided it very well. Just. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's a fun movie. Um, highly recommended. Um, definitely uh, pick out the Blu-ray, the DVD, the VHS tape, or whatever format, even Laserdisc if you have to, for, for those who, who wanted to experience this movie. And plus, I mean, before you get to all the other Studio Ghibli films or any of the Hayao Miyazaki movies, just check out this movie. You, you'll never regret. It's a fun, fun, enjoyable, feel-good fantasy that you'll, that'll always be heartwarming. Definitely a place to your heart, and it'll never let go. That's all I can say. So anyway, I give my neighbor Totoro... A solid five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. And of course, <laughs> say bye to Totoro, because <laughs> he always will be remembered. Bye.